Welcome back, this is Yamma Jack, and we're actually just going to get started on the Terraria update. I killed the Moon Lord! I've done it, I've slayed him on Master Mode for the first time. My first ever Moon Lord kill in Terraria ever was in Master Mode. I believe I get some bragging rights for that. I get some bragging rights for learning how to kill the, mo uh, the Moon Lord. I've only ever fought it once on Expert. I died immediately. So, pretty much, I've only ever fought it on Master Mode, and I did it. And I've accomplished it, so I've, uh, I've almost completed everything in the game on this world. Everything that there is to complete. A little bit more that I have left to do, um, post Moon Lord. Before I've, uh, you know, completed the game. But, uh, you know, or a, a, little, a little bit more before I've, I've, like, completed the game. I have all the items and... All of the trophies and masks and pets and you know all that before I'm like done, and then uh, a fair bit more time after that before I have everything kind of like automated. Because it's it's one thing to get a uh, a Moon Lord mask; it's another thing to automate the acquisition of Moon Lord masks. Um, so that's that's the goal. If I can make it work, I'd love to. Not sure if I will, but uh, automation for a lot of things. I was at my chlorophyte farm there. I want to pretty everything up. I like terraform the whole surface. And lots of lots of stuff left to be done in the world, even after I've you know, hundred percent completed it. There, there's still more to to kind of just complete it better, you know. But um, yeah, I've I've finally beaten Terraria post Moon Lord. I'd, uh, before Moon Lord, I'd, I'd killed, you know, Fishron and Golem and all that, and now I've, uh, I've cool killed stuff. the Moon Lord. In Master, nonetheless. I have the Terra Prisma from the Daytime Empress. I have the, the Master Moon Lord Relic. I have, uh, pets and the SDG MG, and like, ah, oh, it feels good to, to finally have that done. It, it took me, like, 30, 40 attempts or something to finally get it. And now I've learned the fight, so I can, like, go and kill the Moon Lord. It's not, like, a problem anymore. Um. But, uh. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 uh. I'm, I'm able to do that now. So I gotta farm it, get all the stuff. I wanna get the Zenith and. Um, all of that. But. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good to, to finally, uh, accomplish that. It's something that I've wanted to be able to do for. Like actually years, <laughs> and I just I never actually got it to doing it. But now I have. I've I've completed it. I just have to, to do it a whole bunch more times. But it's not that hard now that I've kind of now that I've got my my pattern. I know how to move around and avoid the attacks and like all that kind of stuff. I'm I'm able to, to handle it fairly consistently. Not a hundred percent consistently, but but reasonably consistently. And uh, yeah. Feels good. It feels it feels good to accomplish something. In other news, well, in chess news, those are the two topics that I have lately. But uh, I played an unrated game, an unranked game last night on accident. I played against uh, a friend last night, and I had to make it unranked because uh, they, yeah, they didn't have uh, an account. And then even if they did, I didn't want my rating to be affected by it, and I wouldn't want their rating to be affected by it. Um, so I just made it unranked, you know. It's a little bit more fair that way, and you're able to like challenge people, and it doesn't start screaming at you and stuff. It's all it's all around just better, right? So uh, anyway, I was playing against him, and then I went to like play a 10-minute uh, rapids, and I forgot to change it back to ranked. Um, so when I ended up playing, I ended up playing somebody who was like 1100 elo, and I was only 700. Which I have, I have passed the, th the 700 threshold now, working my way up to 800, 900. Anyway, I played this 1100 elo person, and they said, uh, they, 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 after the game, they said, hey, you're like really good. You're only 700 elo, but it was hard to beat you. And I, I actually, like, looking at the analysis, I made a couple of blunders. But I was actually ahead outside of those blunders, and they were blunders that I kind of, like, recognized in the game. So I, I think, you know, I've, I've only played one person who's at 1100. They were, like, 10-7 or something. Um, 
but assuming anybody who's like you know just around 1100 is is of roughly equal uh, ability, I think that uh, I think I kind of fit in that that market on a on a good day, you know. My my best is is probably around there. My my average, I, I wouldn't necessarily call my uh, say that it would be fair to make you know put my elo to that. I think that that's probably a little bit. You have, you have to have a little bit more consistency. I think to be able to do that, um, and I don't, I don't quite have that yet. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was a good confidence booster when I played against somebody who was at 1100, and they, they didn't stomp. It was, it, it was, a, it was a, a fight that they had to, to do. They had me in like mates, actually, like almost mates. Um, like very, like they were like. One move away from mate, and I found this like ten move long check sequence that let me take their rook and stop the mate. And I'm like, you know what? Whatever ends up happening, whatever ends up going down here, at, at the very least, that sequence of events is something that I'm proud of. Cool I did end up blundering my queen partway through it, but they didn't notice. I didn't notice at the time either, but. Uh, I did do it, so I shouldn't be proud of it, I guess. But I did, I did end up outplaying them to to an enormous extent at that point. In in that one sequence of events, I was whooping their butts, and I was actually like ten or twelve points ahead at that point too. Like I was actually whooping this dude's butt uh, up until I stopped whooping his butt, and uh, <laughs> you know, at that point, it was whooping my butt again. But that's uh, that's what I want. And you know, it, 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 it kind of goes to show the, the mistakes that I'm making are I don't see parts of the board, kind of. You know, like uh, I'll move my queen somewhere and I just won't see that a bishop has uh, sight of it. I won't see that uh, a knight has sight of it or something. Or I'll move a, a rook or a knight somewhere and I won't see something. And that, that those are the kinds of issues that I'm having right now. Uh, which just a, a bit more practice is going to kind of resolve, right? Um... Bit more practice, a bit more experience, and uh, yeah, if, if I'm just able to get through that. I mean, the other thing is, is that it's rapids, right? Like you're you're playing a 10 minute aside chess. You don't have all the time in the world to to make decisions and think things through. Like if I had more time, if I was playing like 90 minute aside chess, I probably wouldn't be um like blundering as much. I would probably not be winning against people who are higher rated than me because they'd also not be making as many mistakes. You know, everybody gets that advantage, but um, my, 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 my losses would be more strategic um, than, uh, than like missing that kind of stuff. Because every, every time you're making, there, at, at no point in time in like 90 minute aside, are you having to like, like, I don't have time to like really think this through, I just have to make a move, you know? At no point in time are you looking at the clock and being like, I got two minutes left? Yeah, we just, we gotta like, we gotta, we gotta speed it up, you know, like, you don't have the time to, to think like five moves ahead or whatever, you have to just, just make moves and, and hope that uh, your opponent's also kind of facing the same time crunch and, but it was good, it was good, I almost beat the person who was 1100 elo, I almost beat them. I was, it was actually I was really close to beating them. I think I was uh, up up until like like I said up, up until that one moment after I uh, after like after I took their rook and I stopped the mate. I was like I got no idea where to go from here. <laughs> like I saw the whole sequence of events up until that moment basically. But after that I was like yeah um, <laughs> no clue. But it was I was pretty proud of that moment where. Because the, 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 this 1100 elo person, 1100 isn't that bit high, you know? But it's notable. I, th I think that if you're an 1100 uh, elo player and you go to like a chess club or something like that, I think that you're not treated as a beginner anymore, you know? I think I think that you're, you're treated as, uh, you're, you're probably one of the, I don't know, like, like, no, I don't want to say senior players at the club, but uh, you're you're probably like.
because because you know you, you you've got a ton of people who are way better than you at the club too but you wouldn't be with the the group of people who are just learning chess and like having some fun and just kind of messing around and stuff like you'd, you'd be above that group you know and uh, I think I think that that I'm not I'm not that far off that level of, of play in, uh, in in two or three months, I, th I think I'll, I'll be pretty firmly planted at the 1300, 1400, maybe 1500 elo kind of area. I'm learning lots of openings and defenses and stuff. I have no idea how to play against the Sicilian. Um, I'm going to learn it eventually, but uh, for right now, I just... Uh, like, the way that I'm learning isn't uh, really, like, looking at stuff. I'm just playing things and then looking at the analysis for it, you know? Like when I'm when I'm opening I go with E4. E4 is just like mathematically it's it's the best opening. Right? Like Um It's it's the best opening for white is, is E4. So when I'm when I'm playing white, I, I open with E4. And uh, I might try out like going for a Stafford Gambit or something. Uh or uh you know, a Vienna game or well Stafford Gambit if you're playing black. But I I, I might go for like a Vienna game or um, something like that if I'm playing as white. And to uh, kind of go for sort of a Stafford-ish gambit, but like backwards. Um, I like I like getting forks with the knight. <laughs> is really the way that it works. I like getting forks with the knight. I like using the bishop on the diagonals to protect and attack. It's, uh, it's a good strategy, I find, for, for this elo anyway. It's a good strategy for higher elos, I find, too. But uh, again, I've only played up to 1100 elo got a friend who was 1500 back when they played they don't play anymore but they've offered to, to play a couple of matches against me so I might take them up on that I don't know if uh, they'd be willing to like give me advice or, or anything like that but just just to be able to play against somebody who's like definitely better than me would be good um because I, I want I want to play against people who are gonna beat me I want to play against somebody who's gonna just like tear my entire strategy apart that's what I want. So if uh, if they can do that for me, I don't think they would. Is the thing fifteen hundred isn't that much higher than eleven hundred, twelve hundred ish. And uh, again, I think that I'm not too far off that on a good day. Like if I'm playing well, I think that I'm I'm around there. So I, I think I'd put up a reasonable fight, and uh, they might be able to say, hey, you should like you know maybe avoid going like this, or don't be so aggressive, or don't be so defensive, or whatever. One one problem that I kind of have. Is uh, with a closed game. I'm not. I'm not very comfortable in a closed game. I just. Uh, I, I, most of the games that I played have been open. Um, closed is when uh, like pieces aren't really being taken. You don't really have many spaces to move your pieces to that aren't going to be taken. Um, you know, you're mostly just kind of like. Bumping around a little bit, trying to gain whatever advantage you can, and, and trap your opponents, and uh, get them to kind of start losing pieces. Um, an open game is when pieces are getting traded left, right, and center, and you have a, a very open center with uh, with lots of um, you know open files, open diagonals, um, all of that. Uh, I'm a little bit more comfortable in that kind of a situation, for sure. Please. A little bit more comfortable in that kind of situation for sure, but it's uh, you know, it's it's a thing that I have to learn, right? It's not like a, a closed game is something where I'm like, well, it's a closed game. I didn't have any choice. I had to lose, you know. Like, no, I had, you you can learn how to to do that. Like, don't do that. You can learn how to do it, you know. So I just gotta I just gotta do that. I just gotta do that. Now it feels it feels good to be getting good at everything I'm doing now, though you know, because everything right now is going well with the chess. Where I'm I'm growing as a, as a player and and my elo is rising. In Terraria, I've accomplished the Moon Lord. In Killing Floor Two, uh, I mean to be honest with you, Suicidal is feeling a little bit brain dead for me at this point. Um. YouTube stuff is going well. You guys uh, seem to have received the uh, the Minecraft video reasonably well. The Minecraft video on my other channel, I'll go take a peek at it actually. 
Minecraft video on my other channel has zero views. I do have two subscribers over there, but I'm going to have to find some way to, to get more people checking that out, honestly, because that's that's where the videos are going to go. The the, the the other videos aren't going over here, so if you liked that video that was uploaded with the Minecraft, then you're going to have to go over to the new channel. It's just the way that it goes, you know? But uh, it seems to be fairly well received. And... Uh, yeah, just uh, everything's kind of going hunky dory, and it's 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 a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling. It's it's good to to feel good about things. You know what I mean? Like just, I don't know. It's not even feeling good about things, but to feel good at things, to feel like you're good at things. You know what I mean? Like now that I've killed the Moon Lord and Terraria, I feel like I'm a good Terraria player. You know? I mean, how many how many people we can check? This is this is a checkable thing. Uh, Steam Terraria achievements. Moon Lord, defeat the Moon Lord. Twenty three percent of people have defeated the Moon Lord. Master mode. Well, let's just look at the. <laughs> I'm trying to find like a Okay, look. I've I've I'm having I'm having trouble. Slayer of Worlds. Okay, that's that's the achievement I was thinking of. Slayer of Worlds, 18% of Terrarians have that. That's not even master mode exclusive, so 18% of people at all have killed every boss in Terraria. And, uh, you know, once once you add in the restriction that, like, you do it in Master Mode and you do Daytime Empress, I feel like that number shrinks a lot. Um, which is cool, right? Because I'm, I'm in that super sort of uh, elite group of people who have, uh, who have accomplished that. Not many people can say they have. And, uh, I mean, that, that feels good, right? In Killing Floor 2, I mean, how many people have, uh... I haven't completed all of the achievements in KF2, but I'm capable of it. You know, I could do it. We will eventually. Um, I'm just bored of them, so... Um, how many, how many people are capable of doing that? Like, not many people are capable of leveling all the perks up to 25 and killing all of the bosses on all of the maps and with all the perks and at all the difficulties and you know whatnot but I am I'm pretty good at KF2 and uh, I'm not like you know god to your game or anything like that but it's just, it's just having that confidence knowing that like yeah I'm pretty good at this you know I say as I'm dying uh, it feels good it, it really does oh please Please don't don't make don't make a fool out of me. Don't make me look a fool. This is what I get for reloading my or for for buying ammo for the 1878s. It's what I it's what I deserve. Um yeah. But it, it just feels good being good at things, and uh, I can add, you know, one more thing to the list of things that I'm good at, which is Terraria. I can now. I'm, I'm officially allowed to say that I'm good at it. <laughs> and that feels that feels good. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly interested in how many people have. Uh, and this isn't necessarily too much of a of an achievement. I, I think that anybody who kills the Master Lord, the Moon Lord on Master Mode, is is about as good as anybody else who does it. I don't think that which one he did first is necessarily an achievement. But I do think it's bragging rights. And how many how many people have how many people killed the, the Moon Lord on Master Mode for their first time? I, don't, I, I think that... Nice. Not many. You know, how many people have killed the Moon Lord on Master Mode at all? It's gotta be a pretty small subset of people in the thousands, maybe tens of thousands. Whatever, I'm, I'm committing, okay? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a committed lady. I'm a committed lady. Um, but then to, to have, been, have that been your first Moon Lord kill? I haven't done it on hardcore, okay? There are people who do like hardcore master mode 
And I'm like, yeah, y'all are insane. That's not that's not the level I'm at. I, I could probably do it. You know, I, I could probably do it. The, the issue for me is that I just wouldn't enjoy it. Like, I could play that kind of, like, super careful, getting all of the warding accessories and being as defensive as possible and, you know, building all of the arenas and setting everything up. Like, I could do that, okay? I just, I wouldn't have fun. So I've, I've never given it a try. I, I wouldn't do it, wouldn't be first try, okay? Like, I, I could start up a hardcore world. I'd probably die before I even got to, like, Eye of Cthulhu, okay? It wouldn't be first try, but I could do it eventually if I, if I put my mind to it and I wanted to, to make it happen, I could. I have, I have no doubt in my mind about that, but... There are, there are people who actually do it, and I think that uh, says a lot for their dedication and ability. I think I think that to kill the Moon Lord in master in hardcore master mode, I think that's that's more of a, an achievement for sure. I think I think it's an achievement of uh, masochism. There are people who do it, man. There are people who do summit or only hardcore runs, and I'm like, you absolute what? <laughs> like uh, Ningishu, she's got. Uh, a summoner only master mode hardcore playthrough and uh, the end goal on it is to get the um, Terra Prisma. She doesn't kill the Moon Lord in it, but she does kill the Empress in, uh, in daytime to get the Terra Prisma. She does it twice in fact, one without wings. Which is like, really? <laughs> Kinda crazy, but okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know, and, and I have, I have no doubt that that you know you'd be able to do the the Moon Lord with the Terra Prisma and uh, and a good uh, whip if you were confident in the fight. Let's see. No, I have no doubt that uh, that you could do it. So that's like hardcore master. It's crazy. So I'm not the best player. I'm not. I'm not that level of, of confidence. But it feels good to be good at something, you know. It just. It just does. Okay. I guess we turn around now. It, it just does. It just does feel good. It really does. Wait, no, he's behind. He's behind me. We still turned around though. <laughs> I should have. I should have taken uh, what I said and, and ran with it, you know. Uh, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, dude. Feels good to get complimented, too, you know? That, that felt really good when I was talking to that guy after, uh, after he beat me last night. To have somebody, you know, 1100 elo... That's, that's like, um... Again, it's not super high. You know, that's, that's not even... And, and elo isn't linear, okay? But that's not even half of, like, a Grandmaster requirement, you know? Like, it's not... It's not, it's not that, uh, that grand, but, uh, that, that, I think that is, that is, uh, at a reasonable point, you know, you'd, you'd expect to possibly end up being in a tournament, maybe make it through, you know, one or two games kind of thing, I think, you know, and, uh, yeah, I think that's saying something for, for that person's personal skill and for them to have complimented me. And said that I was hard to beat, and uh, I played very well. I think I think that's a that's a big confidence boost for me, and it was nice to to see. Kind of validates what I was thinking, which is I was about the thousand level player, but feels good. Anyway, it's gonna do it for today. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it, subscribe to see more in the future, comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.